This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. We hope you had a wonderful weekend, and it is now Monday, Kentucky Morning Start on WKYT. I'm Bill Bryant. And I'm Andrea Walker. We're going to start it right for you on this Monday, September 19th. Here's a look at your headlines. Now at 6.30, FBI officials are continuing to question three people following an explosion in the New York neighborhood. It comes while authorities search for answers after finding five explosive devices in New Jersey last night. Police say one person is in critical condition following a late night shooting in a Lexington neighborhood. The latest on the investigation just ahead. And a Central Kentucky Elementary School celebrating a big milestone today. Find out how they have some big plans. It's just ahead on WKYT this morning. Yeah, that's going to be a cute story, and it's going to be a great week to get out during recess oh, this week yes. for kids. Yes, and you know what? It's Talk Like a Pirate Day for oh, Christmas. Yeah. Our, we our, just, I know, we yeah. just figured we're that out. Like, uh, yeah, we're definitely going there and talking about pirates. <laughs> now, if you dress no up shame. like Bill does, like pirates yeah. on every Friday, yeah. then you can knock out a dozen sure. donuts. Get, so you a, get you a lot of donuts. That's right. All right, let's look at the weather and see what's going on early this morning. We do have some patchy fog if you're heading out and about. Watch out for that. Traveling early this morning is the skies clear and you have those wet grounds, this perfect ingredients to actually knock out some of that fog. So it is here in there. You just got to be watching out for that. When I walked in this morning, Moorhead had some pretty dense fog, but now it's, it looks pretty clear on that sky cam. So it's just here and there. It's just kind of patchy and it moves here and there. 85 degrees by the afternoon. It's a good looking day in store and it's going to be really nice the next several days. I just don't see a good chance rain anytime soon. Uh, some of those water bills will be skyrocketing because you might have to water your lawns the next week or so. We'll talk about that and also look at how high these temperatures go because this temperature isn't even the highest. I'll show you that coming up. Micah, thank you very much. Here's the latest now from WKYT. And as you wake up this morning, the FBI is questioning several persons of interest in connection with a weekend explosion in New York City. Another team of FBI agents is on the scene in New Jersey where a backpack filled with suspicious devices has shut down train service. Hina Daniels has the latest from the site of Saturday's explosion in Manhattan. Authorities in New Jersey suspended train service overnight after a backpack with five suspicious devices inside was found at the train station in Elizabeth. The city's mayor says one of the devices went off unintentionally as a bomb squad began inspecting it. The development came as the FBI and NYPD took several people into custody during a traffic stop in Brooklyn Sunday night in connection to Saturday's explosion in New York's Chelsea neighborhood. The surveillance video obtained by NBC shows people running for cover after the pressure cooker bomb was set off. Nearly 30 people were injured. A second pressure cooker device found four blocks away was disassembled yesterday. So far, city officials are not calling the incident an act of terrorism. We have a lot more work to do to be able to say what kind of motivation was behind this. Was it a political motivation, a personal motivation? Some intelligence experts are pointing to connections between the attack here in Chelsea and the Boston Marathon bombing. A pressure cooker device was used in the 2013 marathon attack. But unlike that one, officials say the devices found in New York had cell phones attached. That's a step up in sophistication from what we saw here in Boston. So that gives them the ability to detonate the thing from anywhere, and it's, uh, it's very troubling. Investigators are trying to figure out whether the Chelsea bombing is connected to another explosion Saturday in New Jersey, which also may have used a cell phone as a trigger. Hannah Daniels, CBS News. The pressure cooker that didn't explode Saturday in New York City will be sent to the FBI lab at Quantico. Now, good news here. All of the victims in Saturday's explosion have since been released from the hospital. We'll stay on top of the story, the latest from CBS This Morning in just a few minutes. And here locally and new this morning, we have learned the name of the clerk who was shot during an attempted robbery at a Lexington gas station. Friends of Charles Moore say the Marine Corps veteran is in critical condition. Police say he was shot several times Saturday night inside the marathon on Lansdowne Drive. WKYT's Mike Byer joins us live with more on the investigation. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Andrea. We're learning more about the victim in this case from a GoFundMe page. His family says Charles Moore, who they call Chuck, is making some progress in his recovery, which is wonderful news. Police say Moore was shot several times during an attempted robbery Saturday night at this Marathon gas station at Lansdowne in Tartan. He was rushed to UK hospital where he is stable but in critical condition. Moore's daughter-in-law says he's a veteran and a dog lover who's fostered several rescue dogs over the last decade. While he continues to recover, police continue to look for the people who shot him. The look 
looking for three men, two who went into the marathon when Moore was shot, and a third man who was driving a getaway car. Police think those three same men are also behind a robbery that happened less than 30 minutes later earlier at the show at Lexington Green. Now there was an overnight robbery at the Speedway on New Circle Road at Meadow Lane. We talked to police this morning and they say they do not think this morning's robbery is related to this weekend's crime spree. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. New this morning, a Lexington man is in jail accused of shooting his neighbor's house. Police charge Brad Cochran with wanton endangerment. They say he was in his backyard when he fired around from his 12 gauge shotgun. Police say several pellets hit his neighbor's house and there were people inside at the time. Also new this morning, we're tracking the latest on the investigation into an overnight shooting in Lexington. Police tell us that one happened about 10:30 last night on Honey J Court off of Center Parkway. WKYT's Lauren Miner is joining us live now with the latest on the investigation of that. Lauren, good morning. Good morning, Bill and Andrea. Well, the police are still looking for the shooter that left one man here at UK Hospital in serious condition. Now, I spoke with Lexington police earlier this morning who say they are still investigating exactly what led up to that shooting. It was around 10:30 last night. Shots were heard by Lexington police on Honey Jay Court right off Center Parkway. After hearing the shots, police say they saw a man running towards Center Parkway. Police then found another man suffering from several gunshot wounds on Honey Jay Court. Now, police are still looking for the suspect, and the only description they have at this time is a man wearing a black shirt and blue jeans. And we're going to continue to follow this investigation this morning, so be sure to stick with us through our newscast and, of course, visit us on WKYT.com. For now, reporting live in Lexington, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you. We're following a developing story out of Florida this morning. Tampa police are trying to figure out what led to a toddler being shot there. Police say they were called to an apartment complex for an injured child around 4 a.m., and when they arrived, they determined the child had died from the shooting. Police are currently interviewing family members to try to figure out what happened. A Lexington father faces charges after police say he tried to jump out of a second story window with his baby in his arms. Patrick Cannon is charged with wanton endangerment. His arrest citation says he tried jumping out of a second story window while holding his baby. The child's mom says Cannon showed up intoxicated at a friend's home at Walnut Hill Apartments and asked for their daughter. After an argument, she says Cannon grabbed the three month old and went to her apartment. That's when she says Cannon tried to jump out of a window with the child. Cannon is in jail on a $5,000 bond. All right, now this one is really creepy. You may have heard about this next story. There's been a scary clown. There have been sightings of them yeah. all across the South, and now it's creeping into Kentucky. Uh, <laughs> okay, check out these pictures that have been posted there on Facebook. You can see someone Ooh. dressed in clown garb in London near the Hal Rogers Parkway. Jamie Hill, who posted the picture, says the clown looked like it was straight out of a horror movie. No, thank you. No, thank you to that one. All right. Lexington police are still trying to figure out what led to a pedestrian being hit by a car over the weekend. Police say a man was walking across East New Circle Road near Industry Road early Sunday morning when he was hit. At last check, he remained at UK Hospital in critical condition. The driver told officers they did see the man crossing the street, but it was already too late. Police say the victim was not walking in a crosswalk. Funeral arrangements are now set for the husband of a Kentucky woman suffering from cystic fibrosis. Dalton Prager also had cystic fibrosis. Friends of his wife, Katie, were in the process of raising money to move Dalton from a hospital in his hometown of St. Louis to UK so that the dying couple could be together. His visitation is going to be tomorrow afternoon and his funeral will be Wednesday. Both will be held in Missouri. Millions of drivers across the South may be spending a little more at the gas pump this month. It's due to a partial leak in the East Coast pipeline. Part of the Colonial Pipeline, which runs from Houston to New York, has been closed since September 9th. Officials say there is a leak in the pipe near Birmingham, Alabama. People in the Carolinas, Alabama, Georgia, Mississippi, and Tennessee are expected to see the biggest price increases. Gas shortages are also possible. Now, thankfully, Kentucky was not on the list of expected places where prices are going to increase. The pipeline's operator said full service will be restored next week. 
Well, Scott County Elementary School is turning 90, and dozens of people were on hand to celebrate Garth Elementary School's milestone. Right. Garth used to be the main school in Scott County. That was back in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. Well, these days it's an elementary school in the county, which, of course, as you know, is very fast growing. To celebrate their 90th year, the school has unveiled a brand new historical marker there. Students will continue the celebration today. They're going to be dressing up as 90 year olds all day long. That should be fun. <laughs> School officials want to raise enough money to buy all 450 students a T-shirt to keep as a memento of the occasion. That's so. always one of my favorite costumes when they dress babies up yeah. as old people. You yeah. know, at Halloween, I love it. Well, the kids will get into it. I'm sure you know, oh, yeah. walking along like they're, <laughs> like they're having love trouble. It. All right, Lexington's newest junior fire chief will be joining us as our guest on WKYT News at noon today. I had the pleasure of meeting this young man. He's very impressive. Last week, we first told you about Ryan Frizz. A fifth grader at Liberty Elementary who had just been named the city's newest junior fire chief. Ryan was chosen by his teachers for this year's honor, and he tells us he will be taking his role very seriously. Now, again, you can hear more from Ryan, including his message of fire safety, coming up during our noon show right here on WKYT. You won't want to miss him. All right. And, and we assure Ryan that Barbara Bailey's just as nice in person as she is. <laughs> Don't be scared, Ryan. <laughs> she You'll is be on fine. Air. Yeah, it'll be fun today. We look forward to seeing him. All right, let's check to see how traffic is moving this morning. Let's go out to Officer Don and check out live drive traffic. Good morning. Done. Good morning. Showing a little backup on the exit ramp from I-75 south at Newtown Pike this morning. Uh, that should clear with a couple of clicks of the light. North side, other than that, looks pretty good, and so does the south side. Inbound Nicholasville past Man of War. No major delays to deal with there right now. As you get an overall look at Lexington uh, rush hour traffic this morning, not a whole lot of red popping up, so that's great. As far as drive times are concerned, we're good to go from Nicholasville and from Versailles. And now, right now, we get a live look at Harrodsburg and Waller through the intersection. That's courtesy of the Lexington Fed Urban County Government's traffic cam. Now back to you in the studio. All right, just before the big crowd gets rolling through there. <laughs> and, you know, why not have the information right at your fingertips, the latest traffic and info anytime available with our WKYT Weather Plus traffic app. Download that for free. It's in the app or the Google Play stores. Hey, good morning to you. Monday on WKYT. We're going to make the best of it. We have a lot more news on the way. Still to come, man's best friend was in full competition over the weekend. Coming up, a look at the first ever Dog Olympics. <laughs> And now that that front has moved on through, look back toward the west. There is absolutely nothing going on. So don't expect any rain anytime soon. But typically that allows our temperatures to go up. Are we looking for any 90s in the forecast? I'll have that coming up next. Now, your hour by hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. So the front's moved through, and now it's really calm, really quiet outside. As you're starting to clear the skies, clearing skies and also the ground that's actually, actually saturated in many locations from that rain this weekend, it's perfect ingredients to actually spark off a few spots with some foggy conditions. So that's what really what we're going to be focusing in on uh, this morning. There's really not much out there in terms of rain at all. Maybe a couple of sprinkles southeastern Kentucky, but it's really about the fog and the temperatures this morning. Doesn't feel all that bad. We're sitting there in the 60s as you walk out the door. One mile showing up there at Bluegrass here in Lexington. I'll show you a picture of that in just a couple of minutes. But you go back towards, say, Somerset, uh, work your way into the Burnside area, off toward London Corbin area, East Burnstad, Rockcastle County, Jackson County, Al Easily. Breath it, breath it coming in at two miles there out of the airport. In the Mountain Parkway, How Rogers Parkway, 421 25. That's going to be a, a tough go at it early this morning with some very dense fog. So just watch out for that. When I walked in this morning, Moorhead had some pretty nasty fog. But now, if you look back toward uh, the Sharky area, that, that uh, exit there on I-64, 801 overpass. Doesn't look that bad. So then you look toward Lexington and you can't see anything. So it's it's very patchy and it's moving out and about as that front has passed on through. Back behind that, the huge dome of higher pressure and you get those winds flowing around clockwise. And what this is going to do, it's going to help us out big time in terms of keeping the rain away. So some of us do want the rain, so I guess I won't help you guys out. I kind of want the rain too, I'm not going to lie. But what's happening is it's pushing that rain you see to the top of the screen, it's pushing it to the north, and that'll funnel it into the Great Lakes region, not so much in our area. But another thing it's going to do, you see those winds out of the north and northwest, that's going to bring in drier air, not so much cooler air, because we'll still be well above average 
8 to 15 degrees above average the next few days. That'll take you all the way through your first day of fall, which is on Thursday, and those drying conditions in place. So it's going to be a steamy end to summer. Drying some things on out, that allows those temperatures to rise and a warm first day of fall. Like I was saying, if you have any plans going on this week, you are just fine. You don't have to worry about rain whatsoever. Tweet it to me. I had some cool pictures this weekend. Uh, very good shot there out of the Woods Bend area. Now, that's right there in Morgan County, just to the west of West Liberty. Gorgeous area out there and a gorgeous sunset. That was one sent on, in on Friday, and that's from Regina Thomas. We appreciate that very much, Regina. On Twitter, Micah Harris, WX, seven day forecast next several days. It looks pretty good. You'll start to dry some things on out, which allows good sunrises and sunsets because you get a lot of that pollution and the pollutants and aerosols in the air. And it just allows those vibrant sunrises and sunsets, which it's not great to breathe in, but it's cool to see. Yeah. I guess. <laughs> so I'll be getting some really cool pictures there on Twitter and on Facebook. I always appreciate you guys sending those in. Good looking weather yeah. next time. Even the middle of the days are just awesome. Yes. You know, yes. Really, really good looking. Nice sunshine. Yeah. All right, Micah, thank you. We really appreciate it. 648 is our time now. Dog owners and their furry competitors embrace the Olympic spirit by taking part in the first ever Rio Dog Olympic Games. It was this weekend. The competition featured dozens of dogs of all breeds, ages, and sizes competing for medals. Organizers said the goal of the doggy games was to socialize humans and their pets while celebrating sports. A nine-month-old beagle competed for the first time and won gold for her performance in aquatic jumping. The event, which organizers hope to repeat each year, concluded at the same time as the end of the 2016 Rio Paralympic Games. Hmm. You know, it looks like they uh, held their Olympics without all the drama that yeah. <laughs> was going on with the, I know. when the people were down They there. know the right way to do it. It's all yeah. fun. All right. Had In the doggy time. Olympics. Yeah. <laughs> 649, the time we're rolling toward the 7 o'clock hour. It's so good to have you with us this morning. CBS This Morning is on the air very shortly with all the latest from around the world and the nation. A lot going on. More news on the way when we return. Keep it here on WKYT. Coming up, more explosives found overnight in New Jersey and five people detained by the FBI in connection with Saturday's New York City bombing. Plus, unprecedented access to CIA Director John Brennan. More real news coming up on CBS This Morning, next. The time is now 6.52, and CBS This Morning is on the way in just minutes now as they're getting ready to go. As you see there at the CBS Broadcast Center, a little sip of coffee by <laughs> Charlie Rose there. Uh, federal investigators are questioning persons of interest in connection with an explosion that left dozens injured in New York City. And the latest CBS News Battleground Tracker poll shows a close race between Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump just 50 days away from the election. We are staying on top of a developing story in New Jersey where a bomb squad found some explosive devices. That's just one of the stories making headlines this morning. Bill has a look at what is trending on the web. We got a lot going on. Well, we certainly do as we uh, keep you informed as to uh, what is going on. Right now, police and ATF agents are at an unspecified location in Elizabeth, New Jersey, where a possible raid situation is occurring. You're looking at the situation now. It comes hours after police found five devices in a bag in a trash can at a train station. The overnight discovery comes after an IED injured more than two dozen people Saturday night in Manhattan. Now, here in Lexington, a man is in serious condition after being shot overnight off Center Parkway. No arrests made in that, and police are still investigating all the circumstances. And we love this story. A 13-year-old is being called a hero after saving his father and a Wayne County deputy from drowning. You can read that story right now on WKYT.com. It certainly is uplifting. Fall arrives later this week, but Micah says most of us will see temperatures maybe close to 90 or so in the, as the week goes along. Keep up with the forecast on Twitter at Micah Harris, WX. An inmate at an eastern Kentucky jail could be facing more charges. Pikeville police are investigating a rape at the Pike County Detention Center. The jailer says a corrections officer walked in on the rape last week. The jailer says they are conducting an internal investigation. The victim is out on shock probation. The jailer says the inmate could be indicted this week on sodomy and rape charges. A Bowling Green man is facing charges after deputies say he admitted to burning down his own house. 
Alan Cumberland is facing arson and animal cruelty charges. Deputies say he started a fire at his house over the weekend and that he had a dog trapped inside. They arrested him when he returned to his house about an hour after neighbors say the fire started. Pediatricians are urging parents and doctors to stop prescribing codeine to kids. That tops your morning health headlines. The American Academy of Pediatrics has found evidence linking the drug to deadly breathing reactions. Doctors say children metabolize the drug faster than adults and may experience dangerous reactions. A new picture from the Hubble telescope shows off a unique galaxy that's about 300 million light years from Earth. That large, bright spot, sort of shaped like a lens, is what What's known as a lenticular galaxy. It's a little different from the spiral or more elliptical ones we're used to seeing. Scientists are especially interested in this galaxy because of its core next to the relative calm of space. They also say there's evidence of a monstrous black hole in the area, ejecting high energy x rays and ultraviolet light. All right, a lot more to learn, certainly. The world's largest Viking ship docked in New York City over the weekend. The ship came in with a grand celebration of interviews, speeches, and Nordic music. The ship left Norway back in April and successfully crossed the Atlantic Ocean with stops in Iceland, Greenland, and Canada along the way. The ship will stay in New York City until September 26th and then it's off again. It looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. Although that must have been a rough ride across the seas. You know? I guess it made me sick just looking at it. <laughs> exactly. Let's check in with Mike. A, a sailor's delight out there as far as our forecast is concerned. That's right? exactly right. And you're going to see a pretty nice sunrise as we have a few clouds laying around. So it's a pretty decent one in some spots. Still over in eastern Kentucky, we're dealing with clouds laying around. So not all that bad this morning. A little fog. Got to be watching out for that. But that's about it. And if that's it, if it's just fog we have to worry about, I think we're doing all right. 85 degrees by the afternoon. And heading through the next several days, guys, it's really not going to change. And 85 is not even the warmest temperature we have. In the seven day forecast, we actually get to the upper 80s in some spots toward midweek. First day of fall is on Thursday at 10 21. It's heading our direction. All right. It's coming. We're excited about that. We're going to enjoy this week. Nobody's more up to date than you to start your day. Thank you so much for being on WKYT. CBS This Morning is next. Thanks for joining us.